There we go. Thank you, Brooke, for pointing that out. <laughs> All right, so here we go. <laughs> go back in. SDI is what the teacher does. Um, this is what we do to meet those needs of our students. SDI is provided by a special ed teacher or that qualified related service personnel. It has, it's planned, it's designed, it, it may be delivered through an integrated collaborative format or model. Um, this is, this is the big one. Our director refers to SDI as Varsity League. You have to have an IEP in order to get SDI. You do not receive SDI if you are a gen ed student. You do not receive SDI if you are on a 504 plan. You have to have an IEP in order to receive SDI. So she refers to that as the Varsity League. Um, SDI instruction is all, it's all these things that we see here. It's necessary for that student to make progress before the for those measurable goals. It has to be planned and delivered initially by that special ed teacher or the speech language pathologist. It's it's um it's required for that student to learn that that AT device. These are um, some of the samples that you could look up and read about in our handbook. Uh, but SDI is, again, initially delivered by that SPED teacher. Here are a few examples of what SDI looks like, time delay, modeling. These are all lots of different examples that you could find in our IEP handbook. I know you know all of that. I still wanted to just kind of do a quick little brief overview of SDI. But ultimately, when you sit down to write an IP, how often do you go, what am I going to write a go for? And then you, you have to, as that professional, you have to prioritize those needs because you're going to think, well, we have all these different needs in all these different areas. You have to prioritize those needs. And then after you do that, Everything has to align with the standards. Once those goals are then determined, you have to make sure that you're using the best specially designed instruction to help your student reach their maximum potential. So how on earth are you going to do that? Well, that's what we have designed these tools for. We have designed reading and writing tools to help teachers meet those needs of those students. The reading and writing tools are laid out basically the same. I'm going to be showing you the reading tools, but again, the formatting is essentially the same. If you do have questions, just let me know and I can get back with you on those. But it's it's very similar. So you're going to note here, this is what um, the first page of the reading tool looks like. You do have copies of both. Um, we only have 30 minutes. I would love to pause for just a moment to give everybody time to look through it. Oh, I don't have time. I don't have time. I'm going to, though. I want to give you two minutes. That is all because I don't have time. Two minutes. Pull it up. Look through the reading or the writing. Two minutes. It's 128 at 130. We're going to talk about it. I apologize for talking again, but I didn't give you a lot of direction. I just want you to kind of scroll through them. I just want you to look through the documents to explore, to notice different things about them. I'm going to give you an example. The reading document is broken down into those five components of reading, phonological awareness, fluency, phonics, vocabulary, comprehension. Writing is broken down into components. 
again, just kind of explore them for just a couple minutes. All right, so let's come back together. I know that wasn't a lot of time, but we don't have a lot of time. You can look through them at your leisure later. Um, I'm hoping you noticed that both documents are set up very similar. This is to make it easier on teachers as they're going through it. So let's kind of just go through the documents a little bit. As you notice, the top of both reading and writing doesn't matter. The top box, the top blue box, it represents our Kentucky Academic Standards, our Kentucky Academic Standard Connections. Most of the time, this is our guiding principles are used. Um, sometimes if uh, it's actual standards, so those foundationals, those are actual standards because we don't have guiding principles for the littles, we use the actual standards. Then on this green band, it contains headings and descriptions of any potential areas for trouble that may cause trouble. So in the example that we're actually looking at, we're looking at reading fluency in this tool. So fluency is the possible area of trouble. You're going to see a simple description of what reading fluency actually is. And then you're also going to see a description, in this case, again, it's reading fluency, um, of possible areas where trouble, where we may see trouble. So in this description, maybe we're seeing the student could be reading slowly with great effort. Maybe they lack accuracy and lack expression. So these are just some problem indicators that we, when, when compared to same age peers, this next section provides some guidance on what it looks like um, or, well, this section. So if maybe the student is skipping challenging words, maybe just different problems that the student may be having. Then when we go on, we can see sample IP goes. This is an example is um, for fluency again. It's just an example, just to give you something to go by. Then we have here some possible IEP progress monitoring. And on over here, we have paired this with possible ways um, for possible SDI tools. So we have matched the fluency, the problem in fluency with SDI tools that will work in this area. We've tried there's lots and lots of options, but we've tried to minimize it to make it easier for teachers to go through to find ones that work for those specific areas. Um, that again, choral reading, paired reading, so forth and so on. Each of these are links. So if you're like, well, I'm not really sure what time repeated reading what this is, or I don't really understand choral reading, each of these can be clicked on. It will take you to another page. Sometimes there's a video. Sometimes it's a news article or some other informational article to explain what you're seeing. 
but regardless, it will give you additional information. So you will understand, have a better understanding of this SDI. Same with the IP progress. You will, it will take you to this IP progress or an explanation of ways to understand this IP progress. So what you see, these are live links and it will take you for further information. So that is how the green band is set up. This is our problem indicator area. In the folder, we have broken down each of the areas, the green band, just to kind of condense it into one a one pager. So you're going to have a one pager on the problem indicator for reading and writing. You'll notice that when you open up your folder as well. The next section of the reading tool, writing tool, is um, this maroon section. It's actually a sample go. These have been created just to show you how the tool can be applied uh, to the development of a student go. Again, these are just examples. They're not meant to imply that all students with fluency concerns would have a go like this example. It's just a sample. The, the goals are always, our students' goals always need to be individualized to meet the needs of those of your specific student. But by focusing on one goal, we were able to narrow that SDI down to specifics just to show you. So in our example here, we have our audience, Sadie. Our behavior will write words in sentences or paragraphs. Our circumstance, when given a three-minute writing prompt, to 36 total words on three out of four consecutive probes. Then we also have our evaluation, our method of measurement. This blue link, it actually takes you to that method of measurement and it's a CBM. So we have that directly in here to give you more information. And then we have our SDI linked in as well. So it's gonna be sentence and paragraph frames. So it's all linked in. We can see all of it and we can see it all in the action. Let me go back. Let me go back. There we go. So that is how the SDI tools are laid out. Each of them are laid out very similarly. Uh, again, blue is will be your standards, green is your problem area. Then we're going to come down to your sample go. Up until this point, are there any questions? Okay, so reading and writing are similar. Math is a little different. I see Jane Goatley's on here, and she can explain the math to you at another day and time, but math is laid out just a little different. If you want more information on that, email her, and she'll help you out. Um, but the information is there. If you are stuck on understanding how to put it, <laughs> 2 p.m., she's, there you go. Check her out. She has the math tool. We have it for reading and writing. We have it for math and we have it for, uh, SEL. So, <laughs> um, these tools will help you bring your standard and your IP goes, it brings it all together. It makes it work together to get your student making that most upward tra trajectory. So let me go ahead and go to that next slide that I wanted you to see. When we are looking at this, we're actually gonna be following a cycle for modeling how to use those tools. We go through this simple cycle, I'm not going to be able to go through it in its entirety, but I'm going to kind of run through it really quick to give you a general idea of what it looks like. So the first step in our cycle is obviously we have to have our student data. We have data from we have data from everyone. We want data collected in a very a variety of settings um, from a variety of people just so we can see what the students doing in different for different people. So we're going to analyze that data. Again, it is imperative that you use multiple data sources to make sure that it provides uh, an accurate representation of your student. Um, 
we want to look at this data, we want to analyze it, we want to know what our students doing. So once you have a good idea of where your students functioning, um, you're going to identify those biggest areas of need. You're going to use that problem indicator guide. And if you remember, I told you we have one pagers in that folder. They're green one pagers on problem indicators for reading and problem indicator for writing. So you're going to it's, you're going to look at that. And you're going to once you have that good idea of where your students are functioning, you're going to identify that biggest area. You're going to use that guide. Lots of times your students are going to have a variety of needs. I get that. But you have to prioritize where that student's need, where you have to prioritize those needs. You have to focus on the need that's going to give the most growth. And that's what we're looking at. After you've done that, then you're going to look at those grade level standards. Now, I'm not saying that your IEP go is a grade level standard. You have to look at the standard to determine how to write the go because we need to figure out how to get him from here to here. And you have to look at those standards to do that. After you have done that, after you've got that all figured out, once you've figured it out how to do that, we're going to figure out how to focus and align those standards. You're going to write your go. The IP, that guidance document is going to help. So use your guidance document. I put the guidance document in your folder in case you do not have it. There's a big explanation on how to do it. So use that guidance document to write your go. Then you're going to move into determining SDI. Now that's our kicker. You have those SDI tools with lots of good examples on the, com uh, the different components, the problem areas, and then again, like I said, there are several different examples of SDI. So the next step is involving that, determining that appropriate SDI. This is what makes special education special. SDI, again, is like I told you, our director says this is our varsity league. This is what makes it special. SDI has to match the go. It has to be provided in that least restrictive environment. And it has to be based on that peer-reviewed research to the greatest extent possible. This is the biggie. Then, of course, you're going to progress monitor and bring it all back and start all over again. And this is how we run through with all of our steps. We would... Word, I'm not going to go through. Well, yeah, let me go through really quick. If we have a student, this is one of our, this is a sample. John is a third grader. He is struggling in both reading and writing. He is currently reading at the first grade level. He's struggling with putting letters, sounds together into words and answering comprehension questions. He cannot spell words phonetically, which is negatively affecting his writing. He can copy from a board and do grade level math. So I'm giving you basic information on John. Let's see what we can do with this. Now we are thinking step one, analyzing the student data. Here's our student data. He progressed from a DRA level two kinder to level eight mid first. Uh, John was given the DRA on August 26th and again on November 10th. He progressed and you can see that per specific skills. John mastered letter sound correspondence 90%. You can see that and recognition of consonant vowel consonant words if presented in word family format. He's is just beginning to segment and blend sounds. You can see all of these different bits of uh, data that we have on John. He correctly identifies 90% of the first 300 words from the fry list. And now we got to think, which would be considered strengths and which would be needs? Blending sounds or phonemes? So now we're, we've looked at the data, now we have to start figuring out what are we going to do next with John. We have to think of his problems. We've looked at the data. Now we have to try to figure out the area of his prioritized need. That's where that literacy um, tool comes in handy. 
We're going to look at it. We've got that one pager. If you can see it here in the back, this is what that green one pager looks like in your folder. So this is it. Um, it's got we we've got lots of information on John. We know he knows almost all of his letters and sounds and is most successful with word families and sight words. He's struggling in lots of areas, but his teachers really think that since he can't blend sounds or phonemes, put pho that that is going to be an area of need for John, blending sounds and phonemes. And they pulled this right off of that one pager. This The one pager is a great resource. So we have now named that problem indicator. So that's our step two. Our step three is to identify the standards. So we would go to our state standards and start looking at those. And we pulled those up. And we're going to, John, you would look at your standards. You're going to look at these guiding principles to get an idea of where to find that quickly find that related grade level standard. And we've got it all worked out here and I'm running out of time. So I'm gonna kind of skip over that just quickly. Here it is. And we've kind of got it highlighted down here. And then we're gonna just write his go. We have a go written to meet all of John's needs, hopefully for that one area, we're going to go back and look at SDI. SDI can be, we can use the, the handbook. We also, in that folder, have given you a literacy companion book. It does not replace this. It's just in addition. It's in the folder. It's just called a literacy companion book. And this is what you're going to find extra information to help on determining uh, additional SDI for specific areas. So we can look and see that John needs blending phonemes with explicit, explicit instruction on blending phonemes for SDI. That's all in that folder. I know this is a real quick informational blur dump on you and I apologize but I wanted to give you as many tools as possible in 30 minutes um, and go over it. So maybe you could go back and listen to it again and see if it makes more sense the second time. Oh, I went, I clicked on it and I lost it. I apologize. There we go, it's back. So. There we go. So now after you go through that handbook and the companion tools and come up with the SDI, of course, we move to progress monitoring, which is step six. And what well, this is one example that we could use for progress monitoring. This is just a direct measure for blending phonemes. The teacher can gather this data. And um, then we would, of course, start the process all over for another go. Look there. I managed to drop it all off on you and still have three minutes. So what questions might you have on the SDI tools? or the process, the cycle itself. Again, I know lots of information, short time. Everything yeah. is in the phone. You have access to all the tools. We. Is the presentation available in the folder? If it is not, I will, I'll go back and double check and I'll drop it in if it's not in the folder, but I'm almost positive it is. 
I believe I have actually put a um, guided notes from the longer presentation that we do. And on the guided notes, it says presentation slides or something like that. And it's a clickable link, which has the presentation included. All right, guys, one minute to spare and we're done. Well, thank you so much for sharing that valuable information. And I'm going to stop recording right now.